Pol Pot. That guy wasn't very nice. Coffees, cookies, all the canned fish, pojo, cassoulet, tripees mahdi, pork pot. That guy wasn't very nice. Mr. Potato. Okay. I would like something with caffeine. Coca-Cola. Perfection. Merci. All right, so we got our treats at the shops. Now we're gonna go check out this grotto. I've seen videos of this and it actually looks pretty cool. The grotto was closed for the day, so we found this logging road or wherever we are to go kind of explore. I don't think we're lost, but I don't really think we know exactly where we are. Look at that little dude. Oh, it's easy to grab this actually. Oh, well, yeah, I suppose if you do it like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. He's, he's totally missing an arm there. Two arms. Two arms. Oh, look, yeah, look at that. One there, one there, one there, one there. Dude, you are hurting. And this one, look, is yeah. missing that bit. And if we were hungry, you'd be really hurting. <laughs> wow. Oh, oh, oh. How'd that feel? So, so. <laughs> Alright, look at the color of this wood. Beautiful wood. Whoa. Mahogany has nothing on that. That's insane. Look at that. For my house to pick. <laughs> yeah. But I cannot take this to Australia, right? No, no, we can't take anything here through Australia. I know. Wow, that is just amazing. One of the things that I find so fascinating about trees in the tropics is there's no growth rings on any of the wood because there's no dormant season and therefore the trees don't get any rings. But look at that, that is just amazing. So it's well known that Australia used to be a penal colony for the British, but New Caledonia used to be a penal colony for the French. Check out these ruins that we just found here. Look at that. 1881. Whoa. This used to be a prison. Yeah, I saw that. Look at those old rusty bars. Those are some thick walls. Wow, look at this. Those bars are still, after all this time, pretty intact. Alright, let's see if we can get up into those cells up there. Oh wow, this goes back all the way back over there. This was a huge prison and it's just sitting here, just right in the middle of the jungle. All right, let's check this out in here. Whoa. So I assume that multiple prisoners would be in this one room. This side. Just 
that's another big room. Nature reclaiming over there. What an incredibly cool place. So this trail leads back to the back of the prison here. Oh wow, look at this. Wow, yeah, these must have been like solitary cells. This would be awesome at night. tree just grew right there or fell down on here or did something but it's there wow all right so down this trail through this part of the jungle is a, yet another building here wow this is just absolutely amazing This is where they chained the prisoners to the wall. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, well, would this be where they hooked the bunks? Yeah, those are still deeply embedded in the wall. I don't know. Maybe this is where they tortured prisoners by making them sit on tiny little seats that would be very uncomfortable to sit on. I don't know. So as with any historical ruins like this that I find, I want to absorb all the information I can about this place. So I'm going to have to look up what actually occurred here when I get back. But God, I love exploring old ruins like this. There's just so much history here and so many stories these walls could tell. <laughs> So we are back at camp right now and we are so completely beat up. My feet are swollen. Maria stepped on a piece of coral that went right into the bottom of her foot. Quetzal was bit by some kind of spider out there. His whole leg is swelling up. So Quetzal was bit by something and it's getting infected. That's gnarly, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, get it sorted out. So we're at the pharmacy getting him taken care of. Ewan's feet are swelling, my legs are, and ankles are swelling. We had to just spend a week sleeping on these islands that are nothing more than basically ancient coral beds. So we're literally sleeping on rocks with a, with a, like a mattress that thin. And it is just a physical toll. But being a filmmaker out here, it has a mental toll as well. I have to remember every cable, every you know, to make sure every battery is charged, to make sure I know what film clips I'm putting on what SD card. I have to mentally keep track of about 20 things at once because filmmaking out here is a house of cards. If I forget to charge one battery, if I forget one cable, if I forget one SD card, whatever it is, the entire house of cards falls and all the videos that I'm filming out here for Reptile Adventures are gone, over. All that money for this trip is over. And not only do I have to mentally keep 20 things going at once and remembering that to film this and remembering to charge that and waking up every two hours to charge camera batteries, but we're doing it on about two to three hours of sleep a night, literally sleeping on an ancient coral reef that is now those islands, and it is the most uncomfortable night's sleep you will ever have. But why do I do this? Why do I go through so much physical pain and, and mental trauma to get this right? And the answer is simple, because this is the life that I want to live. If I had to take my degree and go work in a cubicle somewhere, I would last two weeks before I... Really though, 
this is the life that I've chosen and on the outside it looks so glamorous and it kind of is. I mean, let's face it, it really is awesome to be out here to film where nobody has filmed before and film animals that are virtually almost unknown to science and getting the first 4K footage of those lizards out in the wild. This is a spectacular life. It really is. But from an outsider, it looks like I'm out here on vacation. I'm out here playing. And it is so not. It is so physically and mentally taxing but I love what I do, so it makes it all worth it. And it's gonna take me another month back at home to recoup from this, to have my feet heal and the cuts and scrapes on my legs and catch up on sleep. But again, it's totally worth it. I love what I do. And I'm going to continue to do this for as long as I can possibly physically and mentally handle it. So guys, it's been an awesome trip. Right now, we are going to the airport to head to Noumea and our island hopping adventure here in New Caledonia has come to an end, but it's been so incredibly awesome. So until Noumea and until the next adventure, love the planet, keep your life in balance, and rattle on.